At the stroke of noon on March 25th, 421 AD, Venice was born. Built on more than 100 small islands in the Venetian lagoon in the Adriatic Sea, early settlers of Venice made it habitable by draining areas of the lagoon, digging canals, and then shoring up the banks to be built on by driving waterproof wooden stakes along the canal, topping it with wooden platforms and stone. And that is what the buildings of Venice are built on. Today, Venice is one of the most beautiful and romantic cities in the world. That is not the Venice you are about to see. This is our story. So we are on our way out of Venice because we've just experienced the phenomenon here called Aqua Alta or high tide and extremely high tide because the high tides here that flood the lagoon into Piazza San Marco are usually about 110 centimeters. What we witnessed last night was over 150, 150 centimeters, which completely made Venice a wash. Uh, I'm the beauty and the B-roll. <laughs> Train station. Wee. Wrong train. So we want to get off in Verona to go to Venezia, Santa Lucia. Yeah, wait, but you you make another ticket. See? Because this is other company. See, I know. There was nothing in the... the you are two persons. See. See. Long train. It's difficult. It's very difficult to walk with it, to take a right train, because it is a, a different train. That's See. a company. I know, we didn't... The train was supposed to come at 11.53. And this train came, and we were in coach two, so we were running to try to get in because there were multiple coach two sections. We just didn't. I mean, we American, we didn't. We made a mistake. I asked to my colleague, perhaps you paid the, 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 the fine. Okay. okay. I just okay. Am I moving around or no? Just staying kind of just still. Stand, just stand still because I'm going to eventually. Yep. Whatever you're talking about, I'm going to end up showing as a, as a cutaway. Okay, you ready? I'm going to get my focus here. Okay, and action. The room at Hotel San Jose is spectacular, and everything you can imagine is opulent from the Venetian Empire, of course. From the Venetian glass to the gold lame trim around the bed, this is the room to stay. And the best part of Hotel San Jose and Room 105 to be specific is this incredible view from the balcony where you can take in all that Venezia has to offer, including the gondolas passing by. Ready? Yep. Tonight I am heading to Vinaria Alla Morone, 
for an incredible wine experience where we are going to try all of the wines from Veneto. Boy, is this nice to sit down after a day of travel. So thank you for welcoming us. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> this is the most lovely room for a tasting. And I want to make sure everybody knows exactly where to come when they're in Venice. Yeah. So basically, basically right here we are in San Polo is right by the Rialto Bridge. Okay. And um, it's, a, it's a cozy area, let's say. Some people call Sorry, it like Oh, a, you're fine. Some, some people call the wine bar like a little gem because it's in some narrow, narrow calles some narrow alleys and so you have to find us somehow in Venice you have to you have to find us so if you want to come to Vineria La Marone you can test so many glasses by the one uh, by the glass so many wines by the glass um, and especially some important wines you can taste the Amarone you can taste the Barolo you can taste the Brunello di Montalcino um, and many other ones so this is definitely a, an advantage of coming here uh, of course we are a wine bar so it's not going to be the full restaurant sure. experience, but you can try some very good uh, cicchetti, as you see. I love it. Yeah. I'm so excited. They look so beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and that's what cicchetti is, right? It's, um, oh gosh, you're going to probably, I shouldn't even say Italian <laughs> tapas, but <laughs> I heard don't say that, <laughs> but I thought I would see the reaction. But they are the, uh, they're cicchetti. Yes, correct. Okay. I, I was going to say that, actually. Anyway, Were you? Okay, yeah, good. Like, the Venetian tapas. Uh, of uh, tapas. Right? Yeah. <laughs> a finger food. Good. And how, can it, and how could it get any better than an Italian version, right? Yeah. They're Absol beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And we make them fresh every day. Well, cheers to that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Chin chin. Chin chin. chin, chin as we say in Italy. Chin. <laughs> chin chin. Salute. 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 Do you like it? It's First delicious. Of all. It's okay. delicious. Okay. So, historical in Venice wine, it's very present because Venetians always had a problem to get fresh water. So, in the past, Venetians could collect the rain, and that was the fresh water. So, you know, during the dry season, no rain and no yes. water. So, wine is always present in our history and especially when the Venetian families had a villa on the countryside where they spent their holidays and they had farm and also villa yards. The Valpolicella we are having now, it's something we drink especially in autumn and winter, not really in summer because here it's extremely hot and humid, so we prefer to have maybe a glass of Prosecco. And it is a very versatile wine. Uh, what distinguished distinguish the quality of a red Valpo, good red Valpolicella is the aftertaste. Mm. In the sense that after the sip, it continues to release a good bouquet. If after the sip there's no flavors, it means that it is not good. good no, quality. my mouth is loaded with flavors <laughs> on the tongue yeah. and on the palate. It's beautiful. And probably it invites you to have a something it to is, eat. It, it is definitely it's safe. It's cooling. <laughs> These are really interesting with the uh, beautiful egg on top. Yeah, this is uh, actually quail egg. Gorgeous. And it has some flavor of truffle to it, which I think matches well with the wine. What do you think, yeah. Cecilia? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Well, cheers or it's salute. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> Buon appetito. Mm. Mmm, excellent. Sarah, this is fabulous. <laughs> so I have a question. Is there a proper way to drink wine? Yeah, of course. But first of all, in my opinion, wine is a pleasure. So if I'm doing a blind tasting with other sommelier, I know that I have to apply special technique. Okay. And usually wine is served on a black glass in a room where there's no noise, no perfume. So very object objective. Okay, very sterile, right? Yeah, exactly. But now is not that case. Okay. We are enjoying wine. So I love to open the bottle, even if it's young, in the sense young okay. vintage. Mm -hmm. I prefer to open it um, maybe half an hour before okay. just to check the cork and the aroma. And then the secret, especially for a red wine, is the contact with oxygen. Mm. So when you swirl 
the glass is not just because it's fancy, but it's because the contact with oxygen, with air, really is more aroma. Okay. And if a defect is on the wine, you immediately recognize a bad smell. Wow, look at this. Oh, a 13. Yeah. So the Amarone is the top quality wine for the region. Same grapes. So we are having a 2013 because Amarone, young Amarone doesn't exist. So it's a special way of making wine. And it consists, first of all, in a harvesting by hand. So they don't use machine. They can only harvest by hand to pick the wow. each single fruit. So as you can see, the color is much more dense and deep. Mm -hmm. The alcohol content is deeper as well. Uh, the nose is beautiful. I smell like a really dark cherry, like a yeah, rich a cherry. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, for sure. Yeah, chocolate and cherry. If I tell you licorice... I was just going to say that. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Mark. You can come up with number three. And I'm like, licorice, licorice, licorice. And then... <laughs> Sante. Oh, Sante, I'm in Italy, sorry. <laughs> salute, salute, salute. So I usually identify Amarone as my meditation wine. Okay. It's delicious. Because it has a long aftertaste and after keeping it in the glass for two hours, it continues to release aromas. It has a very long aftertaste. So Sarah, what do we have here? Here we have Parma ham. Then uh, this one is a porchetta. It's pork ham. And uh, this one is a pancetta copata. The bacon we were saying before, but actually it's very different from bacon. <laughs> And then uh, we have uh, uh, this one, which is a uh, soppressa. Okay. And as a cheese, uh, is this one is a cacciotta with a truffle. I knew it. Exactly. This is <laughs> romantic. It's fun. Yeah. It's sophisticated. And I'm actually learning about what I'm eating and drinking and uh, in this beautifully compact space. So which you are is surrounded intimate. by... Wonderful friends. Yeah, new friends. <laughs> exactly. New friends and old friends, right? <laughs> exactly. We have a special part of our brains that can connect a memory, something that you experienced maybe years and years ago with the flavor of that food. Mm. And it's like Yesterday. shocking you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds you something like on your skin. Mm. So wine, it's culture. Food is culture as well because it's part that something that represents something that happened in your life. So it's extremely important. Yeah, it is important. It really yeah. is. So we clap? Yeah! Oh. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Here, as you can see, um, it's a mix of a traditional wine, Venetian wine bar, and we got some interior design uh, concept. Johan, this is beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is a um, burrata. Oh, burrata. So it's a smoked burrata. Yeah. With the eggplant. Yes. Uh, for this dish, we chose something like um, from Sicily. Is of this course. like a caponata? Yeah, or? caponata. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. And so, um, you know, as well as we are some purists in terms okay. of Veneto, we do have some like uh, um, things from the south as well, from Sicily. Interesting. You, you, cannot meet, you cannot miss that. Like, uh, and, and it pairs very well with the wine, which is our, you know, um, core business for sure. Right. Yeah. Sala will tell us a bit more. Mmm. Mm. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm. And uh, paired with this fantastic Vapocello is absolutely outstanding. Cheers. Salute. Salute. To us. Wow, Andrea. <laughs> so this is a, a beef in Amarone sauce with cream of potato. Beautiful. The 
Mmm, it's fabulous. It is. The it's spices, the wine, it's delicious. Yeah. And also it's uh, very soft. Taste. It's very tender. It's the brasato, and so goes down very well. I don't think I've ever had anything like this before. For real? Really good. So one of the things that you'll notice when you come here into the wine bar for dinner is a wall lined with, of course, wine bottles, but also each bottle you'll see in the bottom row here has a special note attached. So Johan, what is that all about? Yeah, basically, um, you know, you enjoy your glass, of, your glass of wine, your bottle of wine, and then you may want to leave a note uh, on your experience, on your feelings, on how you like the bottle. And the good thing about it is, like, after you had a couple of bottles of wine, you know, um, we say vino veritas in Italian, which means after you had uh, a glass of wine or a bottle of wine, especially, you say the truth. And so I really like these notes because they speak from their heart. Uh, vino Baritas means um, when you have a glass of wine, you'll speak the truth. And so, you know, Mark, if you enjoyed your Amarone, uh, I'd like you to leave a note about your experience and, and your feelings on the wine and uh, the atmosphere that you found right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. We'll, uh, we'll keep those um, for sure. And the truth is that Alla Morone is an experience you have to check out when you come to Venice. The wine, the hospitality, the food, the entire atmosphere is intimate, charming, and absolutely memorable. Johan, yeah. grazie mille for the most incredible experience tonight. Thank you. Good to meet you, and thank you for welcoming us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Good? <laughs> what are you doing? Don't be silly. Are you ready? Hold on. And go. So I am in Venice during high tide, which is something that you may or may not want to experience, but we don't have a choice. We're experiencing it right now. So we have our big... Do it again. I was focusing. And Wait, hold on. Ready? Yep. And go. So we decided to come to Venice in November, which unfortunately right now is high tide. And that might be something you want to experience or maybe not, but we're in the middle of it, so we have to truck through the water. We've got our big galoshes on, and hopefully nothing bad happens. It's coming fast and furious. There's the Rialto Bridge. As long as it stays like this, we should be okay. So we are in Venice and trying to get to the Rialto Bridge before, I think we gotta try and go this way. If we can move fast. We gotta go is what we gotta do. Mark, it's getting deep, it's up to your okay. ankles already. How do we get to the Rialto Bridge? Go out, around. 
Out and around. Thank you. Come on. It's shallower here. I don't understand how my boots are wet inside. <laughs> what a great invention that is! <laughs> Rialto Bridge. Is it? Well, we're going wherever you're going then, if you're going to Rialto. Well, no, we a bit before Rialto. I think we need to go down back to the Back west. into the sea. I can handle it. Well, I just asked the guy and he said Rialto was this way. Rialto's that way, but we're just before the Rialto. Ah, okay. Good luck. Bye. Head northwest on Calle del Sturion. Take a right on Calle Toscana. Ryan, you better hurry up. It's coming. <laughs> no. You want to get a piece? Yeah, let's go. Oh, you want to carry that? Yeah. Oh, I want the burnt. Right? Oh, I don't. Oh, fine. <laughs> sure, get what you want. <laughs> so, this is probably the most interesting takeout I've ever made. We just finished dinner and we're getting some slices of pizza in about <clears throat> a foot of water. <clears throat> to take back to our room. I can literally say I've never done this before. <laughs> Borge, are you coming? Isn't this incredible? Ryan, look at the clothing store. Oh my God. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Incredible. Wow. We gotta get out of here. Oh. Oh, no way. This is awesome. They're sitting in here with the water. Oh, my gosh. Oh, pardon. It's up to my knees. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my God, Ryan. I want to go to Venice, Mark. I've never been to Venice. I can't wait to see Venice. Venice is one of those places I'd really like to go. <laughs> Can you even feel your toes anymore? So cold. Listen to the siren. Yeah, I mean, I guess they do it so often that it gets so high that it's unpassable. So we have to wait till like 9 or 11 for the water to subside. Holy cow! Yeah. And I can do it. Ready? One second. Let me look. St. Mark's Square is one of the best places to spend an evening for aperitivo when you're in Venice. But right now, you need galoshes and every kind of flood and rain gear that you can imagine. It is usually lined with cafe table after cafe table, romantic music from the string quartet at Florian playing in the background. Unfortunately, not gonna happen on this Euro Trotter adventure, so we're hightailing out of here on our way to Verona. Ooh, you do not like that dance laugh.